Hello everyone and welcome to day five of the Ross to Jazzy Learning Week. Today we are in the last day and today we are going to put into practice everything that we have learned during this week with a final project. And in this final project we are going to be able to work both in a simulation like we have been doing so far but also some of you are going to have the chance to connect to the real robot, okay? Then uh, let me already switch to my computer screen so that uh, I can see, I can see the, um, the chat here. So let me do that right now. There we go. Okay, let me come here. There we go. Hello. I miss it day four. Is there any way I could get the project and recording for day four? Yes, Greg. We are going to upload that to YouTube, okay? If it's not in our YouTube channel already, it's going to be published during today, probably. Okay? So in YouTube, you will be able to see the recording and get the project for day four. So, uh, hello, hello from Canada. Steven Saito is saying, run into some errors ex executing day four code yesterday. Is there a forum for questions? Yes. The forum, you can go here in the uh, green question mark icon. Right now, I am on, I am like hiding it. Let me move a little bit to one side. No, actually to the other side, I think. Let me, yeah, right there, okay, here, right uh, below the chat, you have this question mark, uh, green button, and this is going to take you to the forum, okay? Hello, hi all. It is about for float 32 and int 32, says Jonathan. Okay. All right, guys. Then, yesterday, yesterday, if uh, you stayed until uh, the end of yesterday's class, I shared already today's project, okay? So for the ones who uh, were here until the end, they already have today's project and they uh, had the possibility to uh, start working on the final project from yesterday, okay? Then, for the ones who didn't get the project, no worries, because you can open it anyways uh, here, okay? So, uh, we are going to uh, start by opening today's class project. Then, uh, it is very easy. All you have to do is to click on this button that you have here right below the stream, which says, open this talks project, okay? I'm going to click here now myself. Let me do that. Run. Okay. Then this is going to take you, as uh, you already know, directly to the uh, Rojject page. Okay. I'm going to remove here my streaming panel. Here you have the streaming panel with the video feed, the chat, and everything. I'm going to uh, take this out so that I have some more space here for my Rojject. But let me anyways open here the chat. 
so that I can see what you are saying, all right? And then uh, after some seconds, the project, uh, it should uh, load, like it's my, my case, and then you should have automatically opened here the project for day five, okay? Rush to Learning Week, day five, yeah? So far, so good. Has everybody been able to open the project? Then here also you have the commands in order to launch the simulation. Okay, so as you can see, today we are going to work with this simulation, yeah, which is a replica of a real environment that we have here in our offices in Barcelona, which I'm going to be connecting to in a moment, to the real robot, okay? But in order to start the simulation here, all you have to do is to execute these commands in a terminal, okay? Then you can copy the commands directly here from the notebook, Next step, you open a new terminal by clicking on the first icon here in the bottom area of your project. If you click here, this is going to open a new terminal and here you can paste the commands and these commands are going to basically start the simulation. Here we can see the processes starting and after some seconds, we should see the uh, simulation window, here I have it, automatically pop up. There we go. H here is the environment. And now, after some seconds, the robot, the TurtleBot 3 robot, should spawn here in the environment. Okay. There we have it. Here we have our TurtleBot 3 robot. Yeah. So this is the environment for the final project. All right? Yeah. Everybody has been able to open the project and load the simulation properly. Any issues so far? Let me have a quick look at the chat. Uh, maybe you forgot to append the decimal part like... Ah, so here some of you are already suggesting some things here to solve the errors. Almost load, almost loaded. We're waiting for service spawn entity. Okay. What about the rest? Have you been able to l open the project and load the simulation correctly? Yes, yes, okay. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, then in my case, in my case for now, I'm going to stop the simulation. You don't stop it, okay? But I'm going to stop it, why? Because right now I'm going to connect to the real environment, yeah? So you see the simulated environment here. And we are using this environment because we happen to have a real environment, a real lab, which is like this. Let me connect myself here to the real robot environment that you're going to see in a moment. This, uh, you cannot do it. Okay, I'm going to allow later uh, some of you to connect also to the real robot to try out your code. Okay, but for now you cannot connect to the real robot, so you should keep working on the simulation. All right. In fact, the, the, the regular flow of a robotics developer should always be start working with a simulation, test your code, make sure that it is working as expected, and then once you have the code working as expected, you go to the real robot and you test it in the real robot. Yeah? So here I have the real environment. Now, in my case, I'm going to skip the simulation part because I already did that, okay? I have been preparing all these 
learning week in advance, so I have already prepared the code for uh, in the simulation and tested it in the real robot. Yeah. So here we have the real environment. Okay, this is life. This is the uh, the real uh, a real uh, lab. And this is, uh, these cameras are streaming live here in uh, our offices at Barcelona. Okay? Yeah, and then, what is the project about? Okay, well, first, before starting with the project, as always, let me remind you about our Robotics Developer Masterclass, which is a uh, learning program, which is especially designed to teach you from the very beginning, from the very basics, you don't need any previous knowledge until being job ready. Uh, so uh, the goal of this masterclass program is to prepare you to start working at any robotics company in the world in six months. Okay. Now in September, we have the batch five of uh, this masterclass. We have already been doing this masterclass for a couple of years with uh, many, many successful uh, students already. And now in September, we are going to start a new batch, batch five. And uh, yeah, so if uh, you are thinking about uh, starting your robotics career or switching uh, your career to robotics, then this is a great opportunity to get started because as I am saying, this uh, Robotics Developer Masterclass program is going to teach you from the very beginning, no previous knowledge required, to a very good level of robotics understanding. We are going to provide you training in ROS2, topics such as manipulation, perception, control, autonomous navigation, uh, 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 DevOps tools, more focused into, uh, ro into companies, and uh, many, many things uh, in order to get you ready, get you prepared to start working at a robotics uh, company. And uh, also, we have still the Ross to Learning Week coupon, okay? So uh, yesterday, unfortunately, uh, the, um, the early bird finished it, okay? So we had, we had uh, many students er uh, enrolling yesterday. I don't know if some of you, some of the uh, people who enrolled was from, the, from uh, this class, but yeah, yesterday we uh, this, uh, the early bird promotion finished, it, but we still have the Ross to Learning Week coupon that you can use in order to get 100 euros off per month, which is still a very good discount. All right, then with the proper introductions being made, let me go back to my project. And then what is the project about? Well, this project is about programming a simple patrolling behavior. What does a simple patrolling behavior mean? Well, a, a patrolling behavior is a behavior that makes a robot continuously move around an environment while avoiding obstacles, yeah? So basically, the goal is to keep the TartarBot 3 robot moving around this environment while it is able to autonomously avoid the obstacles that are within this environment, like the walls, these traffic signals, etc. yeah? So the robot should be able to keep moving continuously and should be able to detect these obstacles and avoid them, okay? This is a simple patrolling behavior. And this is the goal for this final project, yeah? With everything that you have learned during this week, you should be able to solve this project and uh, create a program that performs this patrolling behavior, all right? Then the steps in order to uh, solve this project correctly is first of all create a ROS2 package named patrol behavior and inside this package you are going to create a python script named patrol.py then inside this program you should do two things first of all you need to subscribe to the laser topic of the robot yeah you need to subscribe to the laser topic in order to get the laser data right and in this subscriber, you should have a callback function. Yeah, remember that we introduced this concept of a subscriber callback function yesterday. Inside the callback function of the laser subscriber, you should store the information of the la laser rate, the laser ray on the right of the robot, the left 
and the front, yeah? So we are interested in getting the information from the left of the robot, the right side of the robot, and the front of the robot. With, the, with this information, we should, do, we should be able to know with the laser information when we get too close to an obstacle, right? Now, second thing that you need to do, to do is to create a publisher to the common bell topic. Yeah, we also saw how to do this yesterday. We need to create a publisher so that we can publish messages into the command bell topic in order to move the robot, right? Then we have to create a control loop. Yeah, we have to create uh, some kind of logic for our program. And here you have an example. Yeah, the logic of your program can be different. Yeah, this is just an example. For instance, this is a suggested logic in order to achieve this patterning behavior. For instance, if the distance to the wall or any other obst obstacle is smaller than 0 0.5 meters in either side of the robot, you need to make the robot rotate to the opposite direction in order to move away from the wall or the obstacle. Yeah? If the distance to the wall or any other other obstacle is smaller than 0 0.35 meters in front of the robot, you need to rotate the robot to the direction, right or left, which is more clear of obstacles. Okay? And finally, if the distance to the wall or any uh, other obstacle is bigger than the distance thresholds, these two, just keep the robot moving forward. Yeah? This logic, which is the one that I have used in my program that I'm going to show you right now, is going to allow you to perform a simple patrolling behavior, okay? And then final step is just to create a launch file to start everything, yeah? All these steps, you should be able to complete them with the knowledge that you have acquired during this Rush to Learning Week, okay? Is it clear, the goal of the project? Any questions of what you need to achieve? What is the goal of this final project? Um, I missed the last two projects. Is there a way for me to access it? Uh, I missed the last two projects. Ah, if you mean the last two projects, Rayhan, then you can get them in the YouTube channel. Yeah. So if you go to our YouTube channel, there we are we are publishing uh, all the all the classes and uh, in the description of, of each class you are going to find the project okay so you can get them there in our youtube channel how to figure out which indices of ranges correspond to left right and front of the robot that is a very good question kailash okay so uh, there are different ways in which you can achieve that for instance one method is by using maths, yeah? So if you subscribe to the scan topic, ROS2 topic echo scan, by the way, now I am getting information from the rear robot, okay? Um, yeah, so now what these topics, let me do a ROS2 topic list first. These topics that I am listing here are the topics from the rear robot, okay? Then. For instance, if I do a ROS2 topic echo scan, okay, and I go to the top of the message, let me scroll up here to the top of the message. Here, I have very interesting information, like, like the angle mean, angle max, and angle increment. Okay, so with this information, you can deduce how many laser rays are there, and which ones should correspond to which angle of the robot, yeah? This is a method. Then you can also, you can also uh, print some messages in, in, in your callback and uh, deduct from that which ones corresp correspond to, to which direction of the robot, okay? There are different ways in which you can achieve this. Um, let me go back. I can't open the project. Uh, what do you mean? Tamana. To open the project, you have to click on this button here. Open this talks project. 
Okay, clear, clear, crystal clear. Yes, the goal of the project is clear, clear. Okay, here Sonia is sharing our YouTube channel. I can't open today's project. It says I reach it two gigabyte or I should subscribe. Mm, okay, I don't know about that. Okay, in case it's saying that, uh, I don't know, try removing another project or something like that. Gianta. I don't see day for class in YouTube channel. Maybe it's not uploaded yet. JG. So maybe it's they, they are going to upload it today later. Okay? But it's going to be uploaded. Don't worry. Uh... Could not open playback device. Yeah, th this doesn't matter. You, you can ignore this message, Tomas. It doesn't matter. Okay, then. Let me ask you now, because yesterday, uh, yes, I did, but it says. Okay, then. Uh, Try removing some older projects, okay? You can come here to my projects, and then select one of the projects. I don't know. Um, these ones are not very heavy. 200, 200 megabytes, day four, and day three is 200 megabytes. So it's 500 megabytes in total. That means that probably you have others. Then go to an older project and click on delete, okay? You delete an older project, and then you are going to free up some space. Okay? Sonia is saying, day four will be published today, 7 p.m. So there you have it. Okay, how to do it? So I have just explained it, how to delete a project. Okay? To free up a space. All right. Then... Let me, let me ask you, because uh, as, as I was saying at the beginning of the class, yesterday, yesterday, I sh already shared this project with some of you, okay? The ones that were at the end of the class, I already shared this project with some of you and told you to try to have this project working, okay? Then, did, some, did someone achieve to have the simple patrolling behavior working in the simulation? Did somebody achieve it? Yes, no? Kindly make a detailed series on ROS2 for beginners. Where? That is more or less what we are doing this week, Muhammad. The uh, ROS2 learning week is for beginners. Uh, nope, says Soraya. Bro, show the code. What code? Tomás Abrego says no. Okay, so nobody achieved this patrolling behavior? Did you try it at least? Okay, Steven says got stuck trying to get week four code to work. Stuck with finding right indices for ranges. Okay. Wrote a code for this, but have some compiling errors, says Martin. Okay. Mainly in the laser reading. Try it, but not finish it. Okay. Okay, then let me let me upload my code, fixing it now. Okay, so may, maybe we can we can try to connect later with somebody who is close. Maybe you don't have it working, but at least you have something that we can test. Okay, but for now I'm going to try out my code. Okay, Jonathan. Also, I have tried it, but not properly working. Okay, then let me upload my code because I have prepared some code for this. 
which I'm going to bloat here and show it to you. Okay? So let me... Uh, what is this? Okay. Rush to workspace. So let me upload here my code, which I have it, I think, in... Uh, it's here. No? It is uh, home robot patrol. Here it is. Okay. Then let me come here. See the Rust to workspace SRC. Robot patrol. And then I'm going to uncompress this tar minus XBF robot patrol and Patrol.tar. Okay, so this is my code. Then let me build it here. Colcon build. There we go. And now I'm going to show to all of you the code. Okay? Maybe this is going to inspire you for your own code. Okay? So this is the robot patrol package with the launch file start patrolling. Yeah, this is very straightforward, right? The launch file. I don't think nobody has problems with this. And then the, the main point here is the patrol.py program, right? So here is my patrol.py program. As you can see, it's not something super complex, okay? So let's review this code. Then, okay, this we can remove it. And this also, not needed. Away. Okay, so first of all, we import rclpy, this is clear, and we import the node class, right? And then we need to import two messages, the twist message and the laser scan message, yeah? So far it's clear, right? We, we, we need to publish twist messages and subscribe to laser scan messages, so we need to import these two messages, correct? Then we create our class, which inherits from node, and then we have our constructor here. Now, in the constructor, we have to create a subscriber to the scan topic, right? We need to get the laser information. And also, we have to create a publisher for the common bell topic, right? For the common bell topic, we are going to publish twist messages. And for the scan subscriber, we are going to receive laser scan messages. And here, I create also a timer where I am going to put the logic of my program, yeah? Then, here I am initializing a twist message with the velocities to zero, and here I am initializing some variables for the left side, front, and right side. Yeah, here I will store later the values of the laser readings, okay? As you can see, I am following the logic that I have explained here. Yeah? The logic that I describe it here in the notebook is what I am following. Yeah, for instance, in the callback of the subscriber, store the values of the ray on the right, the left, and the front of the robot. And use them to know the robot's distance to obstacles. Okay. And then finally, here I am create I am uh, creating two more variables for the distance thresholds, okay? This is the uh, distance threshold that I established for the front of the robot, and this one is the threshold that I established for the side of the robot, okay? Then, in my sensor callback, I am storing the values of the right, left, and front, yeah? This is the right side of the laser. This is the front well, this, this laser beam, 230, corresponds to the right side of the robot. This one corresponds to the front of the robot, and this one corresponds to the left side of the robot. Okay? And then, this is the logic of my program, yeah? This logic is basically this here, yeah? So, what am I doing here? Okay, first of all, I check if the left side laser value is lower than the threshold and the front laser value is higher than the 
minimum distance threshold, what do I do? I'm going to rotate the robot to the opposite direction and reduce the linear speed. Yeah? So I am reducing the linear speed, slowing down the robot, and rotating to the opposite direction. Yeah? This is the opposite case. Yeah? So if the right side of the uh, robot is lower than the side threshold and the front of the robot is higher than the threshold, so in the front of the robot we are free of obstacles, but in the right side we are getting too close to an obstacle. Yeah? This is basically what this means. If I am getting too close to an obstacle in the right side, but I am free of obstacles in the front, then what I'm going to do is to reduce the linear speed and rotate, turn to the opposite direction. Yeah? So turn to the left side. Yeah? These two cases are the same, but one we are checking the left side and in the other one we are checking the right side. Yeah? Then, if the front reading is higher than the minimum threshold, no obstacle in the front, then I'm going to move forward. Yeah, without rotating. But if the front is lower than the minimum distance, which means I am getting closer to an obstacle in the front of the robot, then what I do is I compare sides. I check both sides. Yeah? For this, I am using a function, a helper function down, that I have defined it right here, compare sides. And here I check which one is higher, left or right. Yeah? So I am checking the values of the laser in the left side and in the right side, and I am going to rotate to the one which is higher, right? Because if it's higher, it means that the obstacles are more far away of the robot. Yeah? So I'm going to check which side is free, is more free of obstacles, and then I am going to rotate the robot to that side. Yeah? Does it make sense, this logic? Do you understand it? What I am, do you understand what I am doing here? Loco says, thought you'd have to use C++ for ROS development. No. You, you can use C++, but you can also use Python and other programming languages, such as Rust. So it's not mandatory to use C++. It's just uh, an option. Understood. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, clear. Okay. It is, it is pretty simple, right? When you see, when you see it like this, uh, it is pretty simple, actually. Right? I, I am not doing anything super complex here. All this, you already know how to do it, yeah? You know how to uh, create a subscriber, a publisher, how to create a timer, you know how to define a callback, how to create some logic using ifs, yeah? All this, you already know how to do it. And then finally, in the main, I initiate the communication, I create an instance of the node, and I spin my node. This also, we have already done it in previous classes. Yeah? Right? Very clear your development, yeah. The velocity commands are all published within the timer? Yes, Franco. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, this is something I didn't mention, but here I am establishing all the logic. Yeah, and then, after the logic, here is where I am publishing the velocity command, here. Yeah, here is where I use the publish method. Yeah, here I am just changing the values of the velocities depending on the laser readings, yeah. Here I am not publishing the velocity, I am just changing the velocity values depending on the laser readings. And then after I have passed all this logic, then I publish the velocities here inside my timer, yeah, which is the common publisher. Okay? Okay, so very cool, very very nice, Alberto, but does, does this code work? 
you might be asking, right? Okay, let's check it. Let me execute it and let's see if this works or not. Okay, so we have our robot here. Let me uh, move it a little bit with the joystick to make sure that it is responding to commands. Okay, so you can see there how the robot is moving. We can rotate it also. Yeah. With the joystick. Okay, so let's put it like this and then I'm going to start my program. Okay, so I have already compiled it. Let me just recompile to make sure that everything is up to date. Source. And then let's launch our program. Rush to launch, robot patrol, start patrolling. Okay, there we go. So there we go, there we have our robot patrolling. Now it's getting close to a wall and you can see how it starts rotating, see? Now it was getting too close in the right side and then it rotated to the left. Now I am going to get close, I am going to start detecting this wall. So again, my robot stops and rotates to the left to avoid this wall, see? Now again, I am getting too close so I keep rotating to the left. Right? So now I keep moving forward, no obstacles detected so far, but now I'm going to start detecting again this wall, right? And you can see how when the wall is detected in the front, my robot starts rotating to the left in order to avoid it. Yeah? And again, now I'm free of obstacles, so I'm going to keep moving forward until again I detect this other wall, right? The wall down here. When I get closer to 0 0.5 meters, my robot is going to stop and start rotating to the left. Yeah? So you can see how now I could leave my program running and the robot would keep patrolling, moving around this environment forever while avoiding the obstacles. Yeah? So this is a simple patrolling behavior, okay? So this is what you should try to get, okay? So, yeah, let me stop the robot now here. So all of this, uh, Tamana is asking, so all of these commands should be in the orders you wrote or can be written in any order. So all of these commands should be in the orders you wrote or can be written in any order. Um, what do you mean? This, this? You mean this? Logic here? Or what exactly? I don't, I don't get what you mean exactly, Tamana. Why does the robot stop as it turns? The logic said to stop while turning. Yeah. I would expect it, it reduces velocity while it turns, but does not stop. I miss it work. Okay, so here, here there are two cases scenarios. One is when we detect something in the left side or right side, yeah? So we when we detect the robot is getting closer to a, to a wall in the left side or right side, then we don't stop the robot. We just reduce the velocity. Okay? Here. And we are using a factor here of 0 0.5. Yeah, so we multiply the linear velocity, which is this one, for 0 0.5, right? This is one case. Now, the other case is this one, yeah? In this case, which is the one that you are seeing, we are multiplying by 0 0.25 the linear velocity, okay? So here I am reducing the linear velocity a lot. So the impression is that it stops, but in reality it's not stopping, okay? However, my linear speed is super, super low and my angular speed is higher than here, see? Then it looks like it's stopping, but actually in reality it's not stopping. Okay, it's moving but super, super, super slow because I am multiplying by 
0.25, which is a super low factor, okay? So almost zero. I mean initializing, defining, making loop, publishing message. Mm. Okay, mm, I still don't understand very well your question, Tamana. So, I mean, the, the, the order of the functions don't, doesn't matter. I mean, I can, I can move this, I can move this uh, down here and it's going to be the same, okay? It, it, I mean, it depends, okay? Uh, and I can move this function up here and nothing is going to change, neither. Yeah? And I can move this from here to here and it doesn't matter. Okay, but you cannot change, for instance, the order inside the create publisher method. This has to follow this order. So it depends, it depends. It's not very clear, that, uh, that question. Uh, which are the re recommended max velocities for Tattlebot 3, angular and linear? Uh, well, that, uh, I mean, that, uh, it depends on the robot, and this, you can check it in the, in the documentation, okay? So in the official documentation, you can see what is the maximum velocity for Tattlebot 3. In, in, our, in the case of our lab here, you can see that the linear velocity that we are using are very low, okay? In fact, is, if you try to use a, a velocity which is too high, automatically our, our robot detects it and shoots down your program, okay? So it's going to block you from sending velocities which are too high, okay? So if you are working on your code, try to use velocities which are of this order, Okay, below 0 0.1. Yeah, uh, 230 are the angular values of the laser. That values are valid for any LiDAR? No. These values, these values are, uh, where are they? Again, here. These values are the position in the ranges array, okay? Ranges is an array which contains many items inside. It contains all the readings of each laser beam, okay? Then here I am accessing the position 230 of this array. Here I am accessing this, the 360 position of this array and so on, okay? And then it happens that for this specific LiDAR and robot, these positions correspond to certain angles, which are the front laser beam, the right laser beam, and the left laser beam, yeah? But this is not the same for every LiDAR and every robot. It depends on the LiDAR, and it depends on how you mount the LiDAR in the robot, okay? So for each case, you have to check this. How to reset the simulation to bring robot to initial position? I would say just uh, control C to stop it and relaunch it. That's going to be the fastest. Can you show the launch script again? I have something wrong there, yeah? The launch script is here. Package, executable, and output, yeah? Remember that the executable name has to match the name that you are putting here in your console scripts, yeah? Remember this, that we saw this in day three, okay? Exactly this error, we saw it in day three. This name, the name of the executable that you create here has to be the same that the, the, the one that you put in the executable. 
Yeah, yeah, you already answered my question. Thank you. That's what I wanted to know. Okay, great, Tamana. Okay, then. Does somebody have a code that he wants to test in the real robot? Even if it's not working perfectly, at least something that it's more or less moving the robot in the simulation or something. But you have to you need to have something more or less working in the simulation. Toma Tomas is shy. I think he is shy. Can we send you the code during the day? You need time to think and test it. Uh, yes, I mean you can you can uh, send it during the day, but now now it would be to test it in the in the real robot. Okay, if somebody is brave enough to test it now, I'm going to I'm going to uh, allow you to connect to the real robot here, the one that I am connected. Okay, I'm going to allow you to connect yourself from your project to this robot and try your code in the real robot. Okay? That's what I would like to do with some of you. If somebody is brave enough and has something more or less working, does not work in my simulation. Is the message published to Rosbot Excel based controller? No. No. If if I run here a Ros to topic list, do you see that topic here? The Rosbot Excel, whatever. Do you see it here? Kailash? Which topic do you see instead here? Common Bell, right? So the topic for this robot is Common Bell. It's not Rosbot Excel, whatever. Yeah? This topic is for another robot, yeah? So the topic names are not going to be the same for all robots. Depending on the robot, it's going to have different topic names. Yeah. So you need to take that into, ac into account. Why don't I see command bell in my machine? Probably because you don't have the simulation running, Kailash. If you don't have the simulation running, then you are you are not going to have the, the topic available. Okay. So nobody nobody is brave enough to test his code in the real robot, don't be afraid because you are not going to break it, okay? Don't be afraid. In case you are afraid, yeah, and if nobody wants to try his code, then uh, yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to finish the class here because I have already explained the project. I have already, I have already um, shown my solution, tested my solution in the real robot. I can show you, for instance, if you want, let me disconnect for a moment. I'm going to show you the solution working also in the simulation, okay? Because my solution, as you have just seen, works in the real robot, but it also works in the simulation, okay? So let me run it now in the simulation so that you can see how it works in the simulation, which is where you have been testing. So let me myself here launch the simulation. There we go. Okay, here simulation is getting loaded. Okay, and then here let's source Rust workspace install setup. 
and then rush to lounge robot patrol and start patrolling. Okay, so there I have my robot. Well, before this, let me make sure, yeah? So now I have my simulation running, right? I can see it here. Let me move a little bit like this to a top view, there we go. And now with the simulation running, if I run a raster topic list, I can see the topics of the robot, yeah? of the simulated robot in this case. Command bell topic, scan topic, yeah? So let me run my patrolling program in the simulation. Okay, so there we have, robot starts moving forward, and then when I detect the wall here, I should start, I should reduce a lot the speed and start rotating to the right, yeah? There we go. See, so the robot doesn't 100% stop, yeah? But it reduces a lot the speed, yeah? And here again, I am detecting the wall in the left side, and I, I rotate a little bit to the right to get away from the wall, yeah? Now here, I'm going to start detecting also the wall in front, and I'm going to reduce a lot the speed and start rotating to the right, yeah? Let me zoom in. See, so the robot doesn't 100% stop, yeah? But it gives the, the impression that it stops, but it's not really 100% stopping, see? So you can see that my code also works in the simulation, right? And I am successfully avoiding the walls and avoiding the obstacles. Yeah? Is it mandatory to run ROS2 on Linux? No, it's not mandatory, but it, but it is the recommended. Uh, operating system, Muhammad. In, uh, I think that ROS2 also supports Windows, if I'm not wrong, but, uh, but yeah, the recommended platform is Linux, yeah. Mainly, I can't figure out the combo of the setup pi and the launch script to launch my package. I should have watched yesterday class. Yeah, if you attended to to yesterday's and also Wednesday's class, this would be very clear for you, Ivan. Yes, ROS2 supports Windows. Okay, so here I have my robot still patrolling. Yeah. All right, guys, so last call, last call. Is there any, any brave in the audience that wants to try his code in the rear robot? This is the last call, la like like in the airport. How can I learn ROS2 from scratch without spending enough money? Well, the best way, Mohammed, I would say is with our courses, for sure. What is the linear value measurement? Is it meters per second? Yes, it is mis meters per second, Mohammed. It's in meter per second. And the angular, it's radians per second. Okay? So the, the linear velocity, linear velocity is meters per second, and the angular velocity is radians per second. Okay, all right, uh, guys, then if nobody answers to my last call, then uh, I guess I'm going to finish my uh, class uh, here. I hope that uh, you enjoyed it. Now you have some work to do, okay? I have shown you my example even. I have shown you the expected behavior, both in the simulation and also in the real robot. So now what I want you to do is to finish your patrolling programs, okay? And then you can, uh, you can share it with us, you can record a video, share it, with, share it with us in our social media, whatever you want, okay? But, uh, but yeah, can we design humanoid robot and simulate it in ROS2? Yes, sure. You can 
designed a humanoid robot and simulated in ROS2, for sure. In fact, there are already some simulations of humanoid robots. How can I know how much the logic will be reflected as a speed value? How can I, how can I know how much the logic will be reflected as a speed value? I don't understand that question, Mohamed. Where I can enroll in the course? Well, I think I have left here in the... So all these classes that we have been doing during this week are based on this course. Yeah, you have the link here at the end of the notebook in the related courses. Yeah, If you click here, uh, oops, not here. If you click in the link, this is going to take you to the course where all this material is based. Yeah, which is okay. So I need to open it in a new tab. I guess. Let me do it like this. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So all this material is based on the ROS2 basics in five days Python. Yeah. This course is going to teach you ROS2 from scratch. Yeah. What we have covered in the learning week are units. This unit, unit uh, two basic concepts and unit three understanding topics. Yeah. In this course, you are going to find these units but also much more, such as services, callbacks, multi-threading, actions, and debugging tools. Yeah? So this course is the complete guide to learn all the basics of ROS2. Okay? So it's the perfect complement to this learning week because it's going to uh, provide you what is missing in this week, which are uh, very important topics also, such as services, callbacks, multi-threadings, etc. Okay? So you have the link here at the bottom of the notebook. Uh, thanks for the class. Which social media do you prefer for us to share the code? I would say uh, Twitter, for instance. Yeah, Twitter is a good one. Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever you want. If, if you share uh, your code and a video of the robot patrolling and everything and you tag us, we are going to share it in our social medias. Can I run this simulation in ROS2 on my own computer? Yes, you can, Steven. Is it possible to connect our robot to a platform? Yes, Jonathan. It is possible to connect your own robot to the construct and connect uh, and, and being able to connect to your robot from a project. Yeah? If you check in our YouTube channel, you, we have some guides explaining how to do this. Okay? It's very easy. But is it, is it possible? In fact, let me show you here. You can do it here from the real robots. You can register. You have here the section, your registered robots. Then here you can register a new robot manual registration and then here you have to provide some information okay like the name my robot and then the distribution that you are, you are going to use i don't know for instance ros to jassy register and then all you have to do is to execute this command here inside your robot okay so you uh, ssh into your robot for instance and you execute this command inside the computer of your robot. And that's it. Is it this easy? With these uh, two steps, you can set up your robot so that uh, you can connect to your robot from a project like I have just done. Yeah? Like this. As easy as this. Thank you for putting this together. Forgive ignorance. Is there a LiDAR? That project, a vertical fan? Is there a LiDAR that project a vertical fan versus just a point? Um, I don't know what do you mean with a vertical fan, but uh, but yes, there are, there are many different ty types of LiDARs. So, so, so probably yes, JG. Thanks. Ah, so you can see up down the wall. Ah, okay. In that case, um, that that I, I'm not sure. That would be some. So, so you mean some 3D information, right? 
So in general, LIDARs uh, only provide 2D information, okay? For 3D information, you would need to do something else, maybe a, a camera or something like that, okay? But I, I'm not sure, maybe there are some 3D uh, lasers out there. My question is about the output signal to control the motor. How can I know the value is 0.0, .0 meters as example? Well, that you check it in the robot specifications. Uh, Mohamed, every robot has some specifications and they are going to indicate you which are the maximum speeds that you can send to the motors. Could you please show the commands you run for online simulation? Everything is explained here in the project. All the commands to start the simulation and everything, you have them here. Martin, okay, Martin says, code work on the simulation. Can I try on the real robot? Okay, let's just stop everything and let's try with, with Martin. Yes, we have, uh, we don't have much time, but let's at least try it one time. So I'm going to share here Martin uh, in the chat. I'm going to share a link to a Zoom call, okay? So you have to join this Zoom call to join me. Let me share this here. There you go, okay? I have a waiting room, so if anybody else tries to join, I'm not going to allow you, okay? <laughs> So let me uh, see if I can see you here. Okay, so you have to join this uh, Zoom call, Martin. And then I'm going to ask you to share your screen. Okay, I'm going to wait you here. I join it. Mm, I don't see you. No. No, 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 no. Okay. Have you clicked in, in this link that I have shared, Martin? This US web Zoom. One. And now, now I see you, now I see you. Okay, let me admit you. There you go. Okay. Okay, it says joining. Yeah, from my side too. Do you have a slow connection or, or what, Martin? Yeah, it's like still saying joining, it's uh, strange.
I will retry to connect again. Okay, let's try meet. Okay, now, now you are in. Okay, so Martin, can you share your screen now so that I can see your project and what you are doing? Okay, and then I'm going to share your screen with everybody so that we can see what you are doing, okay? Okay, let me, okay, now I'm going to put your screen here, Martin. Okay, okay, so we can see your screen now, Martin. Then, let me, let me do something. Okay, so your user, uh, your name, Martin, is Martin Abou Hamad. Is that correct? Ah, yeah, Martin Abou Hamad. I can see it here. Okay, okay. Yeah, we can see your simulation. Then let me uh, change the book. I'm going to assign you the booking to the real robot, okay? Uh, it's this one. Okay. Martin, can you stop the simulation now? Yeah, stop the simulation. Can you hear me, Martin? Maybe you can you can unmute on the Zoom call, and we can talk there. Hello, hello. Okay, are you able to hear me? Okay, yes, I can hear you. Uh, okay, okay. awesome. Fine. Uh, sorry, I got lost and all the windows I've opened. Yeah. So, uh, now, now it's going to be much easier. Okay, so can you stop the simulation? Yes, I stopped it. Did you press Control C in the terminal? Yes. yes okay. Yes. Then press the press the X button there in Gazebo just to make sure in the in the window at the Top right corner, you see there, in Gazebo. Yeah, in the, in the blue, no, no, there, in the, in the blue. Yes. So... Ah, okay, I see. Uh, okay, never mind, never mind, Martin. Do yes. one thing. Do one it's thing. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So here, uh, try uh, re refresh this page. Now, right. refresh the world browser. Do an F five or whatever to refresh the yeah, or click the yeah exactly. All right. I'm refreshing the page. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so now you see that you have a red dot down there in the in the robot icon. Uh, 
in the robot icon. Yes. Uh, red dot. Wait, it's still uh, refreshing. Yeah, okay, let's wait. Let's wait for a couple seconds. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. This one. Loading yeah, click loading. there. Yeah, so you should click right. there. Yeah, click there. It, do, it doesn't allow you to click there or what? Yeah. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, click on turn on. Okay, there, there you go. Now you are connecting to the rear robot. No, I click that. Turn on. Yeah, the All sound right. the sound is a bit Connect off. Okay, there you go. Start. Yeah. Wait yeah, until yeah, the wait until the cameras load. Okay, it's loaded. Okay, great. Now open a terminal. Open a new terminal and execute your code, and we will see what happens. No, only the terminal. You don't need the yes, ID. Yes, I missed it. Mm. Okay. Wait, wait. First, do a roast to topic list first. Roast to topic list, just to make sure that you can see all the topics. Yeah. Okay, you can. Then now, yes, go and execute your code. So Rust to launch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come on. All there you right. go. Okay, and now show us the cameras. In the it's in the antenna in the antenna icon. The this antenna. one here. Okay. Right. So you can see there the robot. Oh. Yeah. You can see the road is moving. Let's see if it's able to avoid properly the wall. Now it should start rotating, right? Yeah, it is avoiding the wall correctly. Very well. <laughs> okay, so your program is working in the real robot, Martin. <laughs> uh, the main issue I found while coding is uh, that I, ha I had to use a specific value for the laser scan. Uh, while doing the code, I wanted just to uh, mainly use a range of value. Yeah. So uh, I will work on the range of value maybe later okay. and uh, correct my code. Okay, but yeah, at, at least it is it is not crashing against anything and it it keeps moving, so it's it's working pretty well already. Okay, so uh, mainly I use the state machine to go mm -hmm. forward, right, and left of three states. <laughs> okay. Do Do you want to show to show us very quickly your code? Yes, of course. Martin, so that the audience can see it. So that's my code. Okay. Able to see it? Yeah, we can see it. So here I have the import values. Mm -hmm. So that we use the laser scan, mm -hmm. and uh, I also imported the enum to make uh, a state machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is so, an interesting uh, approach. <laughs> yes. So uh, mainly, okay, uh, it needs to be changed. So we have uh, uh, three states, which is go forward, go right, and go left. Mm -hmm. I initialized the values, mainly the publisher, the subscriber. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm updating my uh, timer uh, periodically to uh, 0 0.1 seconds. Mm -hmm. Here are some values I cre I've created. Mm -hmm. I've uh, assigned objects, the velocity object. 
here I'm calling the laser callback mm -hmm. to specific values. Before I wanted to work on ranges, but uh, I will review that yeah. later. It's a, a bit more complex with ranges, but it's better exactly. also. It's a, it's a little bit complex. <laughs> it's more, 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 it will be more robust, the code. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to find the minimum between two mm -hmm. values that are here. Yeah. Mainly to uh, to see how close I am to the wall and to turn. Uh -huh. Now for the logic, mainly uh, I'm updating the state. The uh, current state is go forward. If uh, we are uh, away of uh, uh, 50 centimeters from the wall, we start to turn uh, right or mm -hmm. left, dependent on uh, which is uh, higher. Mm -hmm. Is uh, If I'm close to the right side, I will go left. Mm -hmm. But if I'm close to the left side, I will go to right. Mm -hmm. So that was a uh, logic of the code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks super interesting, especially the fact that you are using this uh, kind of state machine. Very interesting. All right, Martin. So ca can you show us one last time in the, the camera to see if the robot is still there patrolling? Yeah, so the robot is still is there patrolling. So it seems that your code uh, at least is robust enough so that the robot can keep moving and not crashing against anything. Okay. All right, so you can, you can now uh, stop your program already, Martin. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot for being the, the brave one. Because, uh, yeah, I was already starting to, to think that I, I was not going to be able to test it with anyone. But yeah, you, you saved the day. <laughs> All right, Martin, so thanks, thanks a lot. Of course. I will quit the Zoom meeting. Okay. All right, uh, so yeah, I'm going to then uh, finish already the class. Let me go back one last time to the, um, to the chat to see what people is saying. So, Okay, here I am in the PC, yeah. Okay, awesome, well done, Martin. Nice work, brother. Cool, Martin, great work, cool. Well done, Martin. Like the class-based state machine approach. Yeah, so everybody is super exciting with uh, the demo that Martin showed, and he was able to test it in the real robot, and it was working great, because the robot was uh, uh, navigating still without crashing. So, uh, yeah. Then I'm going to uh, finish it here, which I think it's a great moment to finish the class with the uh, demo that Martin showed to all of us live and connecting here to the Real Robots in Barcelona. So, yeah, thanks uh, a lot uh, again for uh, today, not only for today, but for the whole week. I know that some of you have been attending the classes every day uh, from Monday till uh, Friday, till today during the whole week. I hope that you enjoyed this week of uh, learning uh, ROS2. I hope that uh, you have uh, learned many new things and that you are encouraged to continue learning ROS2. And uh, yeah, from my side, I'm going to leave it here. And uh, as I always say, keep pushing your ROS learning. Bye-bye.